it's not that exciting. Um, so this is the replacement filter grill that I'll be using to replace the old one that had a few problems with it. So let's open it up, take a peek. I had a couple of different choices. Uh, I looked into getting a thicker, thicker grill that would hold like a two inch or a four inch uh, filter, but in the end I ended up deciding to stick with just the one inch. And I'll tell you why in a second. That's funny. The packing material is just shredded up Amazon boxes. Hmm. All right. Okay. Now the actual box. Let's see. Um, these are actually, they were surprisingly difficult to find. Um, I'm guessing they're easy to find if you're like a HVAC service contractor because you have companies that you can just go through but as a regular consumer it's actually hard to find some of these. Um, you can find cheap ones on Amazon for like 30 or 40 bucks but my understanding is they don't have these vertical bars which help hold the filter flat and uh, prevent that cave-in issue I was having and keeping it flat is going to help keep it sealed and reduce that extra unwanted noise which is my main complaint. Um, so this one looks pretty good. Let's go see if we can install it. Okay, I got the old one out. It feels a bit heavier. I think this one's probably steel and the new one must be aluminum. Um, I don't know if that'll make any difference. We'll see. Um, so let's open it up. So one of the problems with this one, uh, these locks just kind of spin. They don't spin when you uh, turn it with a screwdriver. And so that's been annoying to have to deal with. So that's one of the reasons I want to replace it. The other is here in these corners, the, the metal's all bent. And so it doesn't, the filter doesn't have a flat surface to sit on. And so because of that, um, when the air turns on, it's pulling on the filter. And because it's not flat, it tends to want to bow it. And then once it bows enough, it gets sucked up uh, into the ceiling. And what was happening over time was as the air would turn on, this cardboard here would just flex a little every time until eventually it developed that crease in it. Um, so that fatigue, I think, is what was causing the problem. And then as soon as it got sucked up in there, you had air rushing through these little pockets, which was causing that whistling noise. So the fatigue that the filter is seeing is actually pretty easy to demonstrate. If you just take like a paper clip and you bend it back and forth multiple times at the same point, uh, you can fatigue that metal. Voila! Okay, it took longer than I thought it would, but there you have it. Okay, let's talk about the data. Um, my thermostat allows me to track my system runtime along with like temperature, humidity, stuff like that, so I get history. Um, and so I just downloaded the data and compiled it into a summary table where I was interested in looking at the amount that my uh, heater was running, comparing my blower speed from high to medium, and then also comparing it uh, with a clean filter versus a clogged one. Uh, I lowered my blower speed to medium temporarily, hoping that that would reduce the chance that the filter got sucked up, um, but it actually didn't really help. Uh, so I figured I'd just collect the data and see if it was more or less efficient switching it to medium speed. Uh, because it was already on high speed, I suspect that that was the right one, and the data kind of tells that. Um, so it ran, I don't know, 50% more on medium speed. And this is all sort of adjusted for temperature. Uh, but this is, there's a lot of variables in here that I'm not taking into account. So it's not like a really good uh, granular conclusion that we can draw, but it gives you some directionality on you know, which uh, decision is the right one to make. So for blower speed, I'm definitely gonna switch it back to high once I get the new filter and grill in there and that all fixed. 
Um, in terms of filter status, like obviously everyone knows a clogged filter is going to reduce airflow and so it can be less efficient. Uh, but I didn't expect it to be quite this different. So, I mean, it, it ran for almost three times as long. Um, and I just compiled the last five days before I changed the filter compared to the first five days after I changed it. So a perfectly clean filter versus a filter that's at its end of life. And it was a really big difference. So uh, yeah, change of filters. Let's take a look at a filter threshold. At the entrance of your air handler, there's a given cross-sectional area. And without a filter, the air flows freely, constrained only by the narrowest place in the duct. But with a filter, there's a much smaller area that air flows through. The air has to squeeze through those tiny gaps that traps contaminants. And these are designed to be big enough to allow clean air to pass through, but small enough to just, you know, capture dust, animal dander, pollen, depending on whatever type of filter you have. Uh, the drawback to filtering, of course, is that your air handler has to work harder to pull that air through, which reduces its efficiency. Um, you can try this for yourself by comparing how hard your lungs have to work just breathing normally versus breathing through a straw. And the pleats on the filter make the effective filtering area bigger, which reduces the resistance to airflow and it increases the life of the filter. As your filter ages, it traps all those contaminants, which further reduces the size of the gaps in the filter and increases the resistance even more. This is why my air handler was running longer with older filters. Uh, it just took longer to move the same amount of air through the system. How effective your filter is at pulling contaminants out of the air depends on the rating of your filter. There's a bunch of different rating systems. One of them is MERV, uh, which I have pictured here. Uh, these companies use these ratings to rate the efficiency of their filters. Uh, there's a lot of online resources that give specifics about these ratings. Uh, I'll, I'll link one below so that you can read more about it if you're interested. Uh, but basically, the higher the efficiency rating, the tighter the filter gaps will be. And higher efficiency filters cost more uh, for two reasons. One is they're actually just more expensive to purchase but also because you have to change them more frequently because they clog up faster because they're capturing more from you know, your living space. This might be worth it to you if you have certain respiratory diseases or allergies. When we had a one inch filter, we were using a MERV 8 rating, but now that we've upgraded to a five inch, we're using MERV 11, and I'm hoping that that's gonna help improve my seasonal allergies a bit. Uh, another common question is how often to change your filter. Uh, a Google search gave me a range of four to six weeks, but the answer really depends on your living conditions, like how many people are living in your space, do you own pets, how often is your handler running, what's the efficiency rating of the filter, is there carpet in your house, do you vacuum and dust regularly? Um, you know, if you're using a standard one inch filter, a good starting place probably is four to six weeks. Just keep an eye on it when you're approaching that time and determine if that's a good interval for you. A good indicator for me on when to change my air filter was always the sound it was making. Uh, it started to get kind of noisy around that four to five week time frame. Uh, but in the more mild months, I could go like almost twice that long without replacing it because I'd go you know, a couple weeks without running my filter at all uh, just because I didn't need to. The main things to remember when managing your air filter maintenance are filter size, efficiency, and replacement frequency. Uh, your system is designed to fit a certain size of air filter. Using the wrong size can actually damage your system, so always make sure you replace your filter with one that's compatible. Um, choose an efficiency rating that balances your needs of cost and filtration. These two always oppose each other, and your needs will be personal to you. Replacement time is also personal, depending on a number of factors that I just previously mentioned. Uh, so keep track of when your filter needs to be replaced so you can set a schedule. You can set reminders on your phone so you don't forget to check, which will save you money on heating, cooling, and maintenance costs. I use pleated filters like this. This is my old dirty one. Um, they have pleats in them to increase the total area that gets filtered, and that's beneficial because it reduces the uh, resistance of the air that's traveling through there. And that means it's going to be quieter. And also, um, the more air you have, the longer it will last. And it's not as hard on your system. So um, like we saw in the data, if you have a less clogged filter or less resistance to airflow, it should be uh, beneficial for you in an, in, from an energy standpoint. Uh, so my solution, instead of going with a thicker air filter grill, like a two or a four inch, I just 
decided to replace the one inch and I bought these five inch filters with this piece on the end that fits just like a one inch filter. Um, so you can see how these two might fit in there the same. Um, but I have enough space behind where my filter goes to fit these thicker filters, which is not the case for everybody. So you've got all that space up there. Um, I'm gonna have to get up there and clean that out before I put the new one in, but uh, so let's clean it out, put the new one up, and get these new five inch filters in, and we should be good to go. All right, that's it for today. I'm gonna go ice my shoulders, but that is so much quieter. So I'm gonna call this a win. All right, see you next time.